And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with hyo joining us on the line. Good morning, hyo -sun. Hi, Lina. Good morning to you. And welcome back. Uh, let's get started. So yesterday in Korea, we marked double the occasion, Buddha's birthday and uh, Teacher's Day. Uh, the president marked the occasion. So let's get to it. Our first keyword of the day. President's congratulatory remarks. So in observance of Buddha's birthday, let's start out there. President Yoon delivered his congratulatory remarks on Wednesday local time. So what was the gist of President Yoon's message? Yes, uh, in his message marking Buddha's birthday, uh, President Yoon vowed to run state affairs, quote, rightly in a way that will contribute to improving the livelihoods of the country's people while enabling South Korea to overcome challenges going forward. Attending a celebration event held at the Choge Temple in central Seoul on this day, uh, which, um, which of course was a public holiday uh, in the country, Yoon explained that he will do all he can to make a warm and happy society here in Korea. And he also added that he will always keep in mind uh, the Buddha's teachings while he runs state affairs. Mm -hmm. Noting that Buddhism has been the foundation of the nation's spiritual culture for a very long time, Yun also added that it continues to play a central role in keeping the entire society healthy. Highlighting this very fact, he mentioned that he will warmly hold the hands of those who are in need and pay close attention to even the smallest factors that matter to the citizens of the country. And the president also underscored how Buddha's merciful teachings will help Korea move forward and also usher in a new era of peace and happiness for the country. And Wednesday's event was also attended by Chu kyung ho a floor leader of the ruling People Power Party, Park chan de floor leader of the main opposition Democratic Party, Seoul Mayor Oh Se-hoon, a Chinese ambassador to South Korea, Sing al hai ming and of course, many others representing the Buddhist community in the nation. As we mentioned, yesterday was also Teacher's Day in Korea. May 15th is the day we mark the occasion. And President Yoon also had a message to the country's teachers. I mean, this is at a time when there are growing calls from society to protect teachers' rights a little bit better. Can you tell us a little bit more what the president had to say? That's right, Lina. Uh, Wednesday also marked the 43rd Teacher's Day here in Korea. And marking this very special occasion, President Yoon thanked the country's teachers in general, adding that there uh, that were not for his own teachers uh, in the past, he would not be able to stand where he stands now. And on his Facebook, President Yoon said that it is a day to think and reflect upon the dedication and the love of our teachers. He also recalled that as he aged, he is uh, becoming to think more about his own teachers whom he met during the course of his life. And he explained how his teachers have taught him how to treat people, uh, develop a sense of patriotism for the country, as well as a sense of responsibility for the entire society in general. All right. So yesterday, the president marking both the Buddha's birthday and Teacher's Day in South Korea. Let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Medical school expansion. So the Korean government's plan to increase the number of medical students starting next year is expected to take shape very soon, with the court set to deliver its decision either today or tomorrow. Either it will be greenlit, or if the court rules against the government, this might really extend the stalemate. Can you tell us the latest? Yes, that's right, Lina. Uh, the Seoul High Court is expected to deliver its final decision on the medical circle's request to suspend the implementation of the planned medical student quota hike as early as today. Citing the government, medical and legal circles, Yonhap News Agency reports that the decision would be made either today or tomorrow. If the court rejects the appeal filed by medical professors, students and junior doctors against the government's hike in the medical school quota in 32 medical schools across the country, the government will likely accelerate with the plan of the first medical student quota hike in 27 years here in Korea. Both the medical sector and the government are expected to file for an appeal when the court rules in favor of the other party. 
But uh, realistically, there is no, not much time left until the college admissions process for the 2025 academic year. Mm. Uh, the schools will need to decide on their final quota by end of this month or early June. Uh, the decision will come, of course, following the court's demand late last month that the government submits related evidence and documents supporting the decision to add more slots in medical school admissions by the 10th of May, while also reviewing an injunction request by the medical sector to halt the increase in medical school admissions. And all of these legal actions were initiated by a group of medical school professors, trainee doctors, medical students, and examinees preparing to go into medical school against the uh, Ministry of Health and Welfare, as well as the Education Ministry. They have filed an injunction to prevent the medical school quota hike plan from proceeding. And while the court decision is expected to put an end to the months-long doctor-government dispute here, we have been witnessing here in the nation, it is still left to be seen, Nina, um, whether the trainee doctors will all return to their posts again mm. and whether there will be any changes made to major hospitals taking a day off every week in a growing protest against the government's push to increase uh, the medical school enrollment quota. So regardless of the court decisions, we're not quite sure if there would be a sense of finality with the ongoing strikes to come to an end. We'll wait and see. Uh, first, we'll wait for the court decision and how the medical community responds to it and how the government responds to that. All right, let's move on to our third keyword this morning. While dealing with the repercussions of the country's first multi-label system, it looks like Hive might be facing more difficulties. Our third keyword of the day. Large Corporate Group. So high is the powerhouse behind K-pop uh, boy band sensation BTS. Uh, they've been designated as one of the, quote, large corporate groups in Korea, being the first entertainment company to join the ranks. Uh, SM, JYP, YG never made that cut. Can you tell us more? Yes, uh, Korea's Fair Trade Commission has designated HYBE as a large corporate group or conglomerate, along with five other new additions to this year's list. It explained Wednesday that the K-pop powerhouse has been officially designated as a, quote, publicly disclosed corporate group for the year of 2024, with total assets exceeding 3.8 billion U.S. dollars. Now, Pang si who is the founder and chairman of the company and holds almost 32% of Hive's share, was recognized as the head of Chebol, or a big conglomerate. And now this is the first time an entertainment-focused company here in the, company ha- here in the country that is, uh, has been put onto such a list. And this move reflects not only the expansion of Hive's scale, but also the global popularity of K-pop itself. The latest inclusion will inevitably shed more light on the company going forward, especially amid conflicts between the company and Min Hee Jin, who is the head of Hive's label, Adore. The company would also be subject to a much stricter set of rules going forward following this latest move. Uh, Furthermore, this is the first time in the history of such designation system, which was introduced back in 1986, to have two related individuals, Pang Xiaok and his relative Pang Jun Hyuk, who is chairman of Netmarble, a leading developer and publisher of mobile games, to be on this table list together. Hmm. And meanwhile, the FTC has exempted Kupang CEO Kim Bom Seok from the Chebel list because of his status as a non-Korean national. And also among other newly added conglomerates this year to the list were hotel uh, franchise operator Paradise Group and Hyundai Marine and Fire Insurance. The FTC lists conglomerates with over 5 trillion Korean won in combined asset value as large corporate groups every year which are then subject to stricter reporting duties as well as regulations. All right. It seems that, as you mentioned at the top of this uh, coverage, uh, we'll keep all eyes on what's next for High. But it looks like the fate of Minijin is to be decided towards the end of this month. We'll wait and see on that front. That's the latest unveiling of the updated conglomerate list. Let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Delivering Korea's Stance. 
So the South Korean government says it has uh, conveyed its stance on U.S. forces stationed in the country to U.S. Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. Now, this comes amid increasing speculations that if Trump is elected as president in November, there could be a shift in policy. Can you tell us more, Hyosan? Uh, Korea's top envoy to the U.S. said he is exerting his full efforts, this time to communicate with the close aides of Donald Trump, especially amid speculations that Trump uh, could consider a withdrawal of the USFK if he is elected president in the upcoming November 5th election in the U.S. And saying that he fully understands that Trump's comments came as part of his uh, campaign rally, Ambassador Cho Hyun-dong explained Seoul's stance through diverse channels uh, to uh, the close aides of Donald Trump. He also added that he is doing uh, this in a very neutral manner uh, so that the communication he makes is not seen as an act of intervening with U.S. domestic politics. And uh, last month, Time Magazine reported in an interview article that Trump had suggested Washington could withdraw USFK if uh, Seoul does not shoulder the costs of supporting uh, these troops. And during his campaign rally, uh, also Trump also gave uh, incorrect numbers of the U.S. soldiers stationed in Korea. Remember this from the last report that we did. Mm. And also, meanwhile, uh, Ambassador Cho also noted during his meeting with Korean uh, correspondents this time, uh, the alliance between Seoul and Washington will continue to be strong regardless of the outcome of the upcoming election. He also elaborated that the Korean government, as well as the Korean embassy in Washington, are preparing for any situation following the U.S. election. He also underscored how the ROK-U.S. alliance has already evolved into one that contributes to the global community, now going beyond the Korean peninsula through very close-knit cooperation and coordination on an array of uh, global issues. All right, with that, we move on to our final keyword of the day. Chinese Connected Vehicles So the latest on U.S. efforts to keep China in check, Washington is hinting that new rules could be coming this autumn on Chinese Connected Vehicles, citing national security risks posed to the data of Americans. What is this about? Yes, uh, this time U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo explained Wednesday that the government plans to issue proposed rules on connected vehicles coming from China. Now, according to Reuters, Raimondo uh, addressed a U.S. Senate committee on Wednesday where she explained that her department decided to take action considering the seriousness of how Washington's national security is often put at risk. Uh, Raimondo pointed out that connected vehicles are often equipped with thousands of sensors and chips, which are controlled by software, which is coming, also, of course, from Beijing mm. in the case of vehicles that are made from China. And this means that they know where the drivers go, uh, their driving patterns, and even the people's conversations within uh, the cars. Mm. So she warned how all this data uh, goes right back to the hands of Beijing. And this is possible because connected cars, also known as smart cars, uh, have onboard integrated network hardware that allows internet access, enabling them to share data with devices both within and outside of the vehicle. Mm. Now, Now, this comes just a day after the Biden administration announced that it is quadrupling tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles, as we discussed yesterday. And it also echoes the comments Raimondo herself made last week. Uh, She said that the U.S. could take, quote, extreme action and even ban uh, Chinese-connected vehicles or impose restrictions on them after the Biden administration launched a probe back in February into whether Chinese vehicles imports pose national security risks. Uh, Back then, the White House said the probe was initiated because these vehicles collect large amounts of sensitive data on the drivers and passengers, while also regularly use their cameras and sensors to record detailed information on American infrastructure also. Mm And to this, of course, Beijing's foreign ministry have urged uh, that the U.S. uh, to respect uh, the laws of the market economy, uh, as well as the principles of fair competition. Hyosan, thank you so much for today's coverage. We'll speak to you again tomorrow.
Yes, thank you for having me. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.